introduction, the one and only Michael Wilbon. Thanks for being here. Fans, we've got a special sports center show for you tonight. Thanks, Stephen. That's right. If you're a basketball junkie, you want to stick around. For the next hour, Irvin Johnson will join us to address the latest Lakers story by ESPN's Baxter Holmes. But we are primarily here to preview the NBA Finals, starting with what the Warriors will do without Kevin Durant in Game 1. We'll also talk about Kawhi Leonard's defensive responsibilities and how they may affect his offense. And by the way, a guy named Glenn Rivers, coach <laughs> of the Clippers, will join us live right here in the studio to break down the NBA Finals. So let's do it. We understand how hard it is to win at this level. It's what you play for. This is our goal every year. We wouldn't have it any other way. It will be a tall task. I'm not afraid of the moment. I enjoy it. I won't give up on my hopes and dreams. Gets it to Leonard. Bang! Bang! Lost by three! He is untouchable. Four more wins and get back to celebrating. <laughs> the crew is in the house. Welcome to this special Sports Center edition NBA Finals preview. Mike Wilborn to my left, the one and only Irvin Magic Johnson know it. in the house, right here next to me, and of course your man. Like old I'm times, yeah. We've done it. this a few times. We've done this a few times, no question. <laughs> but first, let's handle some business here. We need to address ESPN's Back to Ho Baxter Holmes and his article on more behind-the-scenes turmoil for the Los Angeles Lakers. Here's Shelly Smith with a recap. When Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka were handed the keys to the Laker Kingdom in February 2017, nobody expected this. Disharmony, distrust, anxiety attacks, allegations of backstabbing, abuse, and basically sheer chaos when Magic quit two years later. Fans thought they were saviors. Showtime was back and all would be right in Lakerland but you cannot take drama out of L.A. Palinka accused Johnson of not working hard. Magic accused Palinka of backstabbing. Both are accused of intimidating employees to the point that two had panic attacks. Magic said he never disrespected anyone. According to Baxter Holmes's story on ESPN.com, Palinka made up a story about Kobe Bryant meeting Heath Ledger for dinner to talk about how he locks in a role. The meeting was tied to Ledger's iconic role as the Joker in The Dark Knight, but one of Holmes' sources with direct knowledge said the dinner never happened, and Ledger died six months before the movie was released. During the 2018 draft, staffers in one war room strongly suggested taking Villanova power forward Omari Spellman. Instead, Palenka and Magic, in another war room, chose Moritz Wagner from Michigan, where Palinka had played his college basketball. Palinka has been known to sit in in coaches' meetings, irregular for an NBA GM. And Rich Paul, LeBron's agent, weighed in on not only trying to get rid of head coach Luke Walton, but also was trying to get players traded for a superstar, in particular the Pelicans' Anthony Davis. Paul had so much access to the team that, as Holmes reported, rode on the team charter. Highly unusual, although Paul said it happened only once. Still, players told Holmes Paul's career presence was destructive and, quote, a culture killer. When the Davis trade fell through, after players were dangled as trade bait, one Lakers coaching staff member told Holmes, guys know there's no trust there. So what happens now this summer? in one of the biggest free agency periods yet. If the Lakers can't land someone to move the needle, they could be facing their seventh season without making the playoffs. Now here we are for the Sports Center Special, and obviously we will get into the NBA Finals because that's primarily what this show is about. But you see what has been written, whether it's Rich Paul having too much influence, whether it's Magic Johnson, you yourself, Two sides to Magic Johnson, the one that smiled before the camera and the one was who was practically tyrannical as a leader for the Los <laughs> Angeles Lakers. Your response to these reports? I've been in business 35 years. I've had partnerships with the, some of the biggest companies, Fortune 500 companies in, in the country. 
Now, I've never sat in an HR person's office in 35 years. Two years with the Lakers, no HR appearance. Jeannie Buss, do you think Jeannie Buss will allow me to abuse the employees? If that was the case, she would have called me in. Joe McCormick would have called me in, the lawyer for the Lakers, as well as Dan, the other lawyer. It never happened, right? I'm, I'm a person who brings everybody together, uplift the employees. I've never abused an employee, and I never will. That's not what I'm all about. Now, Rich Paul had access to the Lakers because he had two clients with the Lakers. He called and said, hey, I'm in Brooklyn. We talked about allowing him to fly back with the team. That's the only time he flew with the team because they were, he was in Brooklyn, and I allowed him to do it. That was on me. I allowed him to do that. Then let's go to, you know, Rob and I, when we were there, we worked well together. But the little things that was going on behind the scene, that bothered me. And last but not least, lazy, I have built a $600 million business. You cannot be lazy going from playing basketball and winning five championships. So I wasn't lazy as a player. And I'm not lazy as a CEO and a business owner. That's never going to happen. I was brought up in Lansing, Michigan. My father worked for General Motors for 30 years, never missed a day, never was late. Do you think he going to allow me with six sisters and three brothers to be lazy? Not a chance. Now, last but not least, I worked for ESPN for two different separate occasions, right? Worked for him, I think, a total of maybe about eight years. Work with that man right there. Let's ask, why didn't he ask every ESPN employee, did I ever abuse them? Never happened, right? We work well together with Stuart, with JB, with Michael. Uh, I'm a guy that will tell you the truth. Now, a lot of Laker employees didn't like that I held them accountable. That's what my, my, my job was. Did I have to fire some people? Yes, because we had to bring about change and get better. And I think we got a great staff. I will say this right now. The Lakers got a great staff. What's got to happen now is we got to get out the news. I, I'm, I'm really upset that I'm sitting here talking about that because I should be talking about Steph, Clay, oh, you will. Draymond. You, will. You, you, will. Know, you, you know, you know, Quick I should, in the hurry. <laughs> Kawhi, you know, that's what I want to be talking about. And I think today will be my last day until July when I come on first take because I want to thank you for allowing me to come and tell my truth on first take. And I'm going to come back and talk about what happened in the offseason. That's the next time I'm going to talk about the Lakers in July. Last thing that, that, that I want to get to. By the way, I missed the lazy part on Sunday when you were calling, get me up earlier and say, can we get to the studio? And you had already had meetings. I'm sorry I missed that part. What would you do differently as owning as many successful businesses and ventures and some of them you created? Mm hmm. What, if anything, would you do differently? And are, are, is basketball so different mm -hmm. that you would approach it differently, Irvin? Well, I would have hired my own people from the beginning. The one thing I didn't get to do is hire everybody that I wanted, right? Uh, Rob and I got put together. Uh, I inherited Luke Walton. You know, you know so, so I, I didn't get to hire my own people. And so then, then you can judge me. Hey, you can judge me by trades I made. You can judge me by I didn't have enough shooters. You, yes. Did I do some things wrong? Of course. And I admitted those things. I'm not a guy who's going to run from the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. And also, you can talk bad about me. If I did something wrong, I don't mind that. Whether it's on ESPN or other shows, say that magic made mistakes. Because I learned from my mistakes. But I'm going to also tell you what I didn't do. I've never gotten called from Starbucks from Sony when I had to deal with Magic Johnson Theaters, I can keep going right now. Sodexo, all the partnerships I have, the Dodgers and, and Guggenheim. Nobody has ever called me and said Magic mistreated an employee, ever. And that would never happen. I love coming in, even here. I still know all the people here, working here. What's the first thing I do? Oh, he's still here, how you doing? That's who I am. And so it's okay if you wanna try to lie on Magic, go ahead. But I know the truth. Jeannie knows the truth because if she, if I had a disrespected somebody, she would have called me in her office, and that never happened. HR would have called me. It never happened. Two years, never. Good enough, you. Yes, sir. Good enough, me. Yes, sir.
Time to talk some NBA Finals, y'all. That's what we're here for. That's yes. what we're here for. Coming yes. up next on this Sports Center special, Clippers head coach Doc Rivers will join the show. One we'll, of the best in the league. That's right. We'll break down how Kevin Durant's injury will impact the Warriors in game one. So keep it locked right here. Do not touch that dog. NBA Finals presented by YouTube TV. Warriors Raptors Game 1 on ABC. Golden State for a fifth consecutive season. They're headed back to the NBA Finals. A historic run for Golden State continues. You know, five straight finals, the historic nature of what that is kind of crazy to think about it's what you play for this is our goal every year we know four more wins defines your season so you gotta stay locked in kevin durant will travel with the team to toronto for game one of the nba finals but he will not play there he is getting on a plane to toronto his head coach steve kerr from yesterday on durant's status KD's not playing game one. We already, I think we already announced that. And we'll see where it goes from here. It's, this is where, you know, the fact that there's a lot of days in between games during the finals um, helps us. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Time to welcome in the one and only. I'm going to call him Doc Rivers. I know you call him Glenn, but I'm going to call him Doc Rivers. Just to annoy him, actually. He's from Chicago. <laughs> Coach, there's so much that's been going on about Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors. First of all, welcome to the show. But I got to ask you this question. When we talk about the Warriors, what type of team do you view them as without Kevin Durant, particularly with all of this noise about how so good, how much they're so good without him? Well, they're still a championship team. You know, they've proven that before. Uh, they don't have the support and cast that they had before Durant, if you remember. They don't have all those guys, but they're still a championship team. Uh, they're just not as good without them. That, that talk that, listen, I, I saw them in, in the first round, and I saw them with KD on the floor. And, and they're, they're really good with them. So they're How just are they different, that. Doc, though? They, they, there's something about them. They, they're, but they do it then. You know, when KD's on the floor, you know, Steve Kerr's a smart coach. He gives the ball to KD and, and allow him to be KD. Mm. When he's off the floors, when they have more movement. They have movement with KD as well. Right. I think that that, that that narrative out there that they don't have movement when KD's on the floor is not true. Uh, they really do, just not as much as when he's off the floor. It's interesting that you say that because, Magic, I'll ask you, both of you were point guards, obviously. He's a coach, but you were a point guard. is obviously a point guard, Hall of Fame point guard. My question to you is, when you look at this team without KD, what is it that you're seeing from them that makes the Golden State Warriors so effective without him? Well, you allow Draymond Green to touch the ball more, mm. right? So he gets the quarterback more than he would with KD. And, and Doc's right. There's no way that Golden State is better without Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. That's never going to happen. And, and anybody who thinks that is crazy. Now, what happens is, 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 is the ball moves. You see Draymond will be at the top of the key. The Clay and Steph will be coming around two or three picks. Draymond will decide where he wants to throw it. As soon as he passes, he'll go away and pick for that other guy. And Clay or Steph will come off of him. And this consistent movement, they know they have to move more without KD mm. because KD you can throw the ball to and he can make his own shot. Those other guys, they get it more on the flow or in a pick and roll situation. It's the same thing with Phil Jackson uh, and the Lakers with the triangle or the Bulls with the triangle. When Michael was on the floor, the triangle, they didn't run a lot of triangle. Right. All right. When he was off the floor, the triangle, the triangle allowed everybody else to touch the ball and move the ball. That's all they're doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's very similar. Uh, it's just a different offense, but it's the same stuff. And last but not least, they run the break more. See, because they know they got to get easier baskets without KD. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, because now you're missing that weapon in the half-court game where you can just, the shot clock is winding down, throw it to Kevin Durant. He going to go get you well, a basket. Jamar Sisley said that. I mean, he said at one point, I don't know which series, I guess the last series, that they can get a little lazy because they know they can just throw it into Kevin, and it's, it speaks to what they it's know a good they weapon. have. It, the ultimate weapon, isn't it? It's a great weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great weapon. All right, so what does this do, what does this do defensively? I mean, we just saw Kawhi Leonard effectively be the head of the defense that walled off Giannis Antetokounmpo and took him out of it. What are, what are the responsibilities going to be now for Kawhi Leonard defensively? Where would you have him? Oh, he's going to guard Clay, mm. you know, and he'll guard uh, Steph Not as Draymond. well. No, I think he'll guard Clay more, uh, you know, but he'll guard both. You know, the thing with Toronto, but they they have so much length that they're going to be able to That's switch key. a lot of stuff. And that guy can guard each guy. You know, Siakam can guard. They have a lot of guys that can guard. So Toronto's going to be able to defensively switch a lot of things that will give Golden State problems. I think that Gasol won't be a, as effective in this series. Ibaka going to probably play more, right, because just what you talk about, his length, size, and his ability to still score. And he knows how to play Draymond. He knows how to play the Warriors. He's played against them. And also, the good thing about it, so has Kawhi. Kawhi has played against the Warriors. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise for them. They said, okay, we know how to play against the Warriors. The thing's going to be the key is Toronto's bench, to me, is better than the Warriors. That's, what, that's where that's I was going, right Magic, there. because, see, for, forgive me, because I know y'all working out all the time in the gym, <laughs> you know, running. I, it's, it's been a while since I've done it. It's been a while, y'all. I guess I'm asking is this. Haven't, is, it, is it appropriate for me to think that when it comes to the Warriors, there should be some degree of concern for your lack of depth? I know we've seen Looney, Bell, Quinn Cook to a lesser degree, McKinney. I get that. But when you talk about the Warriors, you're talking about their core. And if Toronto uses their depth, don't, aren't you, is, is it there a reason to be concerned about Golden State? Oh, no question. Because when you go to that bench, Toronto go with guys who can score and have been scores, mm. right? Fred is a score, you know, Ibaka can score as well as defend. Mm. So I think that they lean on their bench, Toronto, more for scoring than actually Golden State. What Golden State do, they leave a starter out on, out on the court with the reserves. Yeah, but that's the difference. That's the difference now with KD. See, when we played them in the playoffs, we couldn't wait for one of them to go off the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because, first of all, we knew we had Lou and Tress coming in. Uh, the difference is now without KD, there's only one on the floor. Uh, before, no what point. Steve did was he always allowed two to be on the floor and one the rest. And to me, against a great bench, it makes it difficult to do yes. that. Well, that's that where Toronto this. comes like, in. Yeah. Boogie Cousins has been out since April 15. Hasn't played since Golden yeah, State's second tough. game of the playoffs against you guys. Do you put him right back in? I don't know. That's tough. Uh, if he's healthy, you're going to play him. I mean, let's be honest. But... But it is tough. The other thing that, that we all miss is in our series, all right, by game four, we had by game three, we had to make a switch. We took our five off the floor, just like Magic was saying, uh, and we started uh, a four, Jamaica, at the five. You think of the next series. They did the same thing. Cantor wasn't playing as much. They start playing smaller, quicker guys. You just said Gasol. He probably won't play as much, and that's what happens. You, you have to match up to Golden State's movement, uh, and you have to have someone up when they, those guys are coming off those screens, or they will kill you, uh, and that's what we did. Magic, talk yeah. to me about what it's like leading up to game one other NBA finals and and it's two different scenarios you got a team in a reigning defending two-time champions that have gone to the finals this is their fifth consecutive year you got a franchise in Toronto that's never been to the finals Kawhi's been there yeah Serge Ibaka has been the final yeah. Kawhi has won the finals yeah. but for the most part a vast majority of those guys have never gone to the NBA finals so what's it like for the two teams going into game one well I think that Golden State they're relaxed yeah they they've been there done that I think the problem is more with Toronto because they don't know what to expect. Now it's more interviews. There's more ticket requests. See, outside obstacles might hurt Toronto. Mm. And I'm talking about just everybody pulling on them, everybody wanting something from them. Where Golden State, they said, you know what, we've been there, done that. We take care of our tickets ahead of time. 
We don't let our families come and, and bother us during this championships because they also their family has been through it. Mm -hmm. So I worry a little bit about Toronto being their first time. But I will say this. I'm worried about Golden State on that first game because I'm going to actually pick Toronto to win that yeah. first game. Rust, yeah. Rust, right, Irvin? Nine days. Come on. One thing that you love as a basketball player is this. Staying in a routine and rhythm. Yes. And, and when you haven't been bumped, Doc, tell them, when, when you haven't been bunked, bump, bumped on your shot, mm. that first time you get that bump, you're off, and the ref's not calling it, you miss every single time. Yeah, and you can't do it during practice. No. You, no. Like, the times you, you win early, you get all that rest. Rest is great. Uh, but just the routine, being out of it, and the intensity, it's even worse for a rest in the playoffs. Yeah. Because when you jump back in the playoffs, it's not jumping back in a regular season at the All-Star break. You're meeting a team that has been in playoff intensity and that's you've right. had nine days off. Mm. That's that's a lot of off. And isn't this why, didn't Pat Riley take you all to Hawaii for like a, a Santa, camp? Santa Barbara. <laughs> Santa Barbara. <laughs> How did I get Hawaii in my he took us But he to made Santa you Barbara. have a camp, right? Yes, and we probably had three full scrimmages, games, with referees. Mm. How did game one go? Uh, not too good. <laughs> was that the one they lost by 40? Was that the one you lost by 40? Well, well, we got beat by Detroit. We had all okay, that time off. Detroit came in and beat us game one. Mm -hmm. Look, if I was Golden State, I would want no time off. They were playing so well. Steph Curry was playing better than I've ever seen him play before. Mm -hmm. On fire, so relaxed, letting the game come to him. He was shooting outstanding. Uh, Draymond Green was making all the plays, averaging almost a triple-double in that Portland uh, series. And i tell you, the guy who really probably got helped with KD going down was Clay. Yeah. Clay now knows he's going to get 20 to 25 shots again. Yeah, the third guy on any dynasty never gets as many shots. That's right. You know, Ray Allen didn't get as many shots as he used to. Chris Bosh. That, that, doesn't mean, or, that doesn't mean they're not as good, yeah. but there's always a one and a two and a three, and that guy doesn't. I was in the same situation as Nick Nurse mm. in a lot of ways. Like when we went and played the Lakers and, and, uh, and won the title, we had a bunch of guys that hadn't won. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it was about them seeing that this was part of the necessary dream. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about I, – I didn't want them to think about you're playing in the NBA Finals. I wanted them to think this was necessary. Mm -hmm to play in the NBA Finals, to get to where you're going. I got you. and, and so Toronto, if this has been their goal, mm -hmm. this part of it should just be part of the process. Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset they have to have going. By the way, the you. last coach in the Western Conference to beat the Golden State Warriors in a seven-game series. How about that? <laughs> that, that, tells you how good, that tells you how good they are. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of discussion. We got a lot to talk about this upcoming NBA Finals. Coming up on this Sports Center special, Kawhi Leonard has been straight balling this postseason. But where will his help come from in the finals? Magic, Doc, Will Bond, and yours truly. Discuss all that and more up next. He's been a great, great player for a long time. He's clearly one of the very best players in the NBA, and he's playing at an incredibly high level now. He's a scorer, and... He plays at his own pace really well. Um, you try to speed him up, try to show him bodies, uh, or play him one on one, and you know it's, he, he just he has confidence to be able to get to a spot. So it's one of those things where one on one defense, you got to take that challenge. Whoever's guarding him, try to force him into tough shots. Guys, we've seen Kawhi Leonard. We've seen him perform. There is just no question that this is one of the greatest players in the world. No question about yep. it. Is he the best player in basketball at this particular moment in time? Well, I think that, you know, if he can win this championship, it'll put him right up there with LeBron and KD. Um, I think that Kawhi is doing it on both ends, man. And, and what we're seeing, too, is a guy now because of basketball is about three-point shooting. Kawhi gets most of his points on twos. But he always get to his spot, and I don't care even if you beat him there, he's so big and strong, he gonna bump you off and still get his shot off. And what we really love, Doc, is that he plays both ends of the court, and he makes the, always the right read. He on is offense. the most like Jordan that we've seen. Like, there's a lot of great players. LeBron is phenomenal, yeah. KD is phenomenal, but when, not that he is Jordan or anything like that, but he's the most like him. 
big hands, uh, post game, can finish, great leaper, great defender, uh, in between game. If you beat him to the spot, bump, bump you off. Yep. And then you add his three point shooting. Mm. You know, so, uh, you know, I don't, I never get in that who's the best player. Right. Uh, you know, Magic is the best player. You know, Michael Jordan was the best player, LeBron. But the, it's that same group. Well, let me go to you with this. Yeah. How do you defend him it's if tough. you're the Golden State yeah. Warriors? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. And, and that's, to me, what everyone's missing Durant's about KD. Yeah. That's the part they're missing. Uh, because, you know, Iguodala's going to have to do it at times. Clay, uh, the one thing Golden State does have, they have a lot of good defenders. Mm -hmm. So it'll be Clay. It'll be Draymond. A a at times, it'll be Iguodala. But it will not be a KD, and that's a problem. Doc, I wouldn't put clay on him yeah just size this is what i would do you get yours Kawhi, because you're gonna get him anyway stop everybody else mm. which has been done by the way we've seen yes, that in, in, in smaller doses that yes happen. yes because remember toronto goes through long droughts of not scoring so i would say clay never get on Kawhi. He, he's not big enough to handle Kawhi. He's great on the perimeter, but Kawhi is so smart, he'll just bag him well, down. What, I want to I wanna be and jump clear over. about what you're saying. Are you saying Kawhi, if you're going to drop 50, go ahead and drop 50? That's right. Stopping everybody else? That's right. <laughs> it's a little different, though, with, with, with Kawhi uh, because he's so efficient. Yeah. You know, like, I've always like high volume guys, get yours. Mm -hmm. That was been always, you can get as many as you want because it's not an efficient 50. Kawhi is efficient. Mm. You know, and, and that's the problem. But I do. I think all those guys will have to guard him at some point because you really don't have. I Iguodala is going to guard him the most. Exactly. If, if, if and, and probably Draymond yeah, because exactly. I would save yeah. Clay. Clay. Yeah. Clay needs to score and be able to move around. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really sacrifice Clay and well, put him. Keep in mind, we, I'm, we scared, got, I'm scared of Draymond getting in foul trouble. Well, he's foul Kawhi trouble. Though. But also, whoever guards him, remember Kawhi in the last <laughs> series, he only played the first couple of games healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was noticeably limping to the yeah. point where Nick Nurse had to go to him and say, are, are you going to go? And Kawhi every time would say, of course I'm going. But we're talking about quad and knee injuries. He was, he was, I mean, on one leg, he was the best player in that series, which really spoke to how great to me Kawhi Leonard was. Yeah. And he, he didn't even know which leg to favor and limp on in games five and six. And yeah. yet, well, well, let me peel from that. Let me peel from what you just said to go back to Doc and Magic on this. Knowing that, if you're the Golden State Warriors, don't you prioritize pushing the ball up the floor even more because of that reality? Even though you got a few days rest to heal yourself, if the guys got those plethora of well, injuries, that, that's the only way. That? They, that's what they have to do anyway. Yes. Okay. You know, one of the things uh, you, when they're really good, Golden State is when Draymond Green or when any of them are pushed. When they start running yep. and getting the ball up, not only do they score early and getting early points in the playoffs, easy early points is hard to get. When you can get them, you can get them. But it also gives them 20 seconds to run their offense and their movement, opposed to our whole key was trying to get them to 14. Mm -hmm. If we can get them to start their offense at 14, it's easier. But Draymond was smart enough to know, push it up, that's right. get them in the stuff. And that's what one of the things Magic was saying is with the ball in Draymond's hands more, it's hard to slow him down. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of fours that are going to be up turning the ball. They know that. And, and that's... Golden State will try to score early offense, and that's going to be a key to the series. It, it's, it's two things. That type of pressure and transition, whether the Golden State Warriors score or not, what they're doing is wearing you down. Yes. Pat Riley used to say this, Irvin, I don't care what happened for the first three quarters because I know in the fourth quarter that team that we're playing against is going to be tired because we run, run, run. Golden State is the same way. Their best offense, really, in, in their defense, is their transition game. And their movement. So exactly. you see them as having a fourth-quarter advantage unless Toronto's bench can really help out early enough in the game so that, the, so that their stars, Kawhi, Or, or if Kawhi dictates and, pace. Well, you don't want to get in the fourth-quarter uh, uh, game with Golden no, State anyway. No, nobody's going to beat yeah, them. Because that. they've been there. Like, they, they, they know every set. They know every <laughs> ATO. Like, that's where you get yourself in trouble. Getting in a one-point game, uh, the, the difference is with Toronto, their one-point offense down the stretch is Kawhi. Yeah. And so they at least have someone that may be able to match their, their greatness on one end. And then I would say this. Kyle Lowry played an excellent series against Milwaukee, and, and, and we're not talking about him. Remember, I love his toughness. 
He's greedy, gritty, excuse me. And also, too, his shot selection is good, right? He knows who he is, and he's going to get you 16, 18 points, and he's tough as nails. Now, what they have to do is the young fella, Siakam, yeah. he's got to. He's key. He's got to have a big series Huge. because if he doesn't have a big series, there's no way they score enough points to beat Golden State. I want to get back to Kawhi in this respect because y'all talked about his poise. Y'all talked about his efficiency. They rave about his patience. You're not speeding him up. You're not speeding him up. And I guess what I'm asking is that's exactly where I was going. Is it possible that the Golden State Warriors – could potentially try and speed him up, not let him play at his They pace. haven't been successful at it. Remember this. Right. The last time Kawhi Leonard was on the court against Golden State in the playoff game, mm -hmm. San Antonio was up 25 yeah. at the half. Yeah. And then he got hurt, and we don't know where that was going. Golden State was hugely favored in that series against San Antonio, but they were up 25 in game, game one, and Kawhi Leonard was having his way. They're not going to speed him up, but what they will do is they're going to send someone. Yeah. You know, they're, they're saying they're not. But I'm going to tell you, someone's coming. Uh, they're not just going to sit back. For three quarters, they are. Yeah. Uh, but the, very similar to what they did to Lillard, where they were sending that extra guy. It wasn't a trap. It was almost a corral, a late trap. Uh, they're going to do that because they know down the stretch. They can't let them be. And that's where you got to give Steve Kerr credit. Man, yeah. listen, he coached his butt off yes, in that Portland series. And he will come up just like Doc Rivers sick. I hate to call him coach, but Coach River said. <laughs> Doc's good. Doc's yeah. good. Because, you know, you're my boy. Yeah. So he will come up with a scheme and a, and a plan to try to disrupt Kawhi. But he knows he can't stop him, just slow him down. But those other guys are going to be a key for Toronto. Can Casal get some points? To me, Siakam is still the guy. I'm telling you, if, if he has a big series, this, this series will go seven games. I'm looking at him and the ability to hit spot-up threes, and that's where Siakam is a threat, and I give you that. The only question I have when we get back to Kawhi is that as efficient as he is, as lethal as he is, y'all said he's primarily a two-point scorer, going up against three-point marksmen. But he's Steph Curry he, he, and Clay. I know he can hit the three. Kawhi is a great three point. I mean, yeah. he's, a, he's above forty percent three right. point. And they always well. seem to come in critical yeah. times. Yeah. yeah, offensive rebounds and threes. He Kawhi doesn't have a volume, but you look at the impact he had in those two areas in games five and six for Toronto against Milwaukee. They were critical. I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, can the Toronto Raptors beat? Golden State with Kawhi being primarily a two-point scorer if indeed they're able to take away that three-point shot. Yeah, I think they can, but I, I think Kawhi's going to give you both. I think yeah. when you look at his points, yeah. he, he, he makes three, four, five threes a game. Uh, he sprinkles in everything else. He gets to the foul line. So my answer is yes, he, he can. Yeah, and, and I think also, too, Golden State, I think in the half-court offense Golden State, they're not going to get as many threes against this team because Toronto can switch. Yeah. See, they can do something that most teams can't do because you can remove Gasol off the court and they still will have a great lineup out there with Serge playing center. So I think that they're going to switch everything. Ibaka, Siakam, and Kawhi. Exactly. Obviously, you got those guys can switch everything. They can yeah, switch and, everything. And when, when Gasol's on the floor, they're going to go to Gasol. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna use him. And so – that's going to be the key for Gasol. How valuable can he be offensively on the floor when he's on the floor? If he can't be, then you're going to see more of a box. See, what I would do is put Gasol in when they bring the second, the second group in. That second yes. group. Then play him a lot yeah. because he can keep up with those guys. Yeah. See, this is what you see. I'm trying to tell you. I'm, I'm learning basketball. <laughs> I'm learning basketball. <laughs> Doc Rivers, Irving, Magic Johnson, of course, the great Mike Wilbon, and myself. You have to take a quick timeout. But coming up. Klay Thompson was salty about not making an all-NBA team, and it literally cost them millions, like 30. Will he take Ooh. his frustration Lord. out of the Toronto Raptors? We'll talk about that next. Kemba got it. Uh, you were a couple. I mean, that's cool and all, but, like, when you go to five straight finals, I, I, I respect those guys, but holy, when you go to five straight, I mean, it takes more than just a couple of NBA guys. It's like an all-time team, but... Whatever. That's not. I'd rather win a championship than be 13 on NBA. So it's all good. Players and eligibility for the Supermax deal shrinks the Warriors' 
bidding leverage over other teams this summer. When he becomes a free agent, the Warriors' max offer will be $190 million over five years, $30 million less than a super max amount. But that's still $50 million more than any other team can offer for a guy that's averaging 19 points per game this postseason. Look, y'all. Let me uh, permit me to go first take <laughs> mode for just a second. As a member of the media, I think it's an absolute disgrace that we're in a position to cost somebody thirty million dollars. Amen. Having said all Amen of that, having that. it's a disgrace. Having said all of that, outside of the first seven games of the season, when he scored, he was averaging like fourteen percent from three point range, only fifteen points per game, thirty nine percent shooting for the field. Last seventy one games, twenty two points, forty seven percent for the field. 42% from three-point range, and you're on a two-time reigning defending NBA champion. I don't understand how he didn't make all NBA one, two, I'm going to tell three. you how. I'm going to tell, tell you me. Because I have a vote like you do. And I was just telling Doc this. I want to hear right. this. Mm -hmm. I wish I had my ballot back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you who I voted for, third team. I voted for Kimball Walker and Kyrie Irving. Those are my third team guards. And, and, and part of this, Steve, now you know this when you're, doing, when you're considering a ballot. You're looking at teams. Yes, I, I give extra consideration to guys who are on winning teams. But also, then you look at a guy who can't be on a winning team and is doing the best he can and has him close, which is the Kimball Walker situation. I think that's how we describe right. that. Bradley Beal, another one who's got this designation tied to his money. One, we shouldn't have it. That designation should not be tied financially at all. to any player in the league, and the league has to change that. But then you, you, you look at this, and I, I, I have the ballot back. It's a regular season ballot, just like everything else we vote for. Regular season. And now I wish I had it back because I would have voted for Clay Thompson. I'm, Who would I left off? I'd have left Kyrie off. Yes. But that's a postseason reaction. That's a reaction to his postseason, what I consider failure. Right. And I would vote for Clay Thompson, and I'm sorry I did it the way that's I did it. That's not fair to the guys that didn't it make isn't. the playoffs. Uh, because I know. I know, no, it it's, it's a tough. It, it just shouldn't be connected. But shouldn't I, be. I would say because they're so good, <clears throat> it worked against them. Yep. And because the team's so good. Yeah, the team is so good because you have the fans that love them. Like, I love watching Golden State play. They play the right way. They play together. The style is up and down. And, of course, they can shoot. Listen, Klay Thompson is one of the best two-way players we got in the game. And... If you, you line up all them two guards, I'm taking Clay Thompson, right? Because that guy going to give you everything that you want. Who else would say, come KD to the team and I'll take a back seat? I'm going to be the one who will suffer mm -hmm. because KD came to the squad. Well, well, let me say this to go to Doc. When you say that, one could make the argument that Clay is the best two guard in the game because everybody he's been compared to is a one. You got the Kyrie, you got the Damian Lillard, you got the Russell Westbrooks, you got the Kemba Walker of the world. You got Harden. Who, 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 he's a two. You could say he's a two, With but Dan Tony treats him like a one <laughs> because he touches the ball every day on possession. But uh, you wouldn't have voted, but no. I know you voted for Harden instead yes, of the very first team. Yes, so I did. No. And it's okay. But that's okay. okay. It's okay. They deserve yeah, that. Exactly. But Clay deserved to be on that team. Exactly. Make no mistake about right, it. Doc. And I keep saying it's that third guy. You know, the, the Warriors win for one reason. They have talent, number one. But they have cooperation. Yeah. And when you have cooperation with the players and the coach, and they buy in, like Curry, and this is the point people miss about Steph, and I don't think we give him enough credit. Right. Mm -hmm. we, selfish. We keep not talking about him <laughs> being in the top four or five players, and he is. Yes. All right? Easy. Uh, but what he did is, has never really been done. The, the last year that they lost, that was to us, the ball was in Curry's hands all the time. The following year, Steve Kerr comes in and talks him into buying into a new system. He gave up the ball. Uh, there, was, What's the stat? He gave up the ball 55% less, and he won the MVP. Yeah. By giving the ball up less, more. So he didn't have the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. What he learned is movement. That's cooperation. They, that team, when you watch them, they have bought in to who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, they trust it. Yep. They trust their coach. They trust each other. And... That hurts Clay in some ways because he doesn't have the ball as much. He doesn't get as many shots, but he is a great player, and he's one of the top 15 players in our league. Go ahead, Matt. The, the toughest situation for Clay right now is this. When he did struggle in the beginning, he didn't touch it enough to get out of his struggle. 
right? He didn't get up enough shots. That's so true. So, so, so a shooter needs to shoot, right? And we talked about uh, Steph struggling up until we got to these playoffs, and he said, oh, no KD, let me show you what I'm all about, mm. right? And he's been playing great. It's the same way with Clay. Clay now knows he's going to get to his 20 shots, and he plays the game the right way. Listen, man, these dudes are one of the, will go down as one of the greatest teams ever to play this game, no matter what happens in this series, mm-hmm. right? If they win three in a row, man, you got to now, man. there's a debate, <laughs> you know, on your hands on if they're the greatest that's ever played. I'll, I'll close the conversation by saying this. As great and phenomenal as Kevin Durant is, one could argue the Golden State Warriors' top priority it should, should be to keep the Splash Brothers together because of how they feed off of one another. Just a thought. Just a thought. Think about that. <laughs> I got bills to pay. <laughs> got to take another break. But next... On this Sports Center special, our final thoughts, plus the details surrounding the high school star who said no to college basketball and yes to getting paid overseas. 